Psalm 37. If you're tuning in here, I'm just getting ready, waiting for some people to come in. This is an unannounced live stream. Yeah. All right, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Like I said, this is not an announced live stream, but I just wanted to do a video quickly. Um, hopefully people can hear me. Uh, morning, Anthony. Can you hear me all right? Is the audio okay? Can everybody hear me? If you just write a comment and say, yes, I can hear you loud and clear. Okay, good. All right, I'm going to get started here. Um, of course, thank you, everybody. Um, this is my website, kingjamesvideoministries.com. Not exactly like that up in northern Maine right now. <laughs> Actually, I kind of wish it was like that. It'd be nice and cool, but uh, that's another issue. But uh, are debtor prisons coming to America? That's the subject of this live stream. And uh, heard about this about two weeks ago or whatever else. Um, big short fund manager Burry dumps portfolio buys prison stock. Hmm. August 15th of 2022 by Reuters. Um, let's see if I can get zoomed in here a little bit more so you can read it better. Um, <clears throat> Cyan Asset Management Fund Manager Michael Burry, who rose to fame with timely bets against housing ahead of the 2008 financial crisis, is in the last quarter dumped a dozen bullish positions and replaced them with a new stake in prison company, Geo Group Incorporated, according to filings released on Monday. Shares of Geo Group rose 12% on Monday, the largest one-day rally in the company since June 2021, according to Refinitiv, or what, Refine, Refini TV, however you say it, data. At current prices, Burry's position is worth approximately $3.9 million. Uh, shares of this company, which has a market value of $852 million, are down 1.6% for the year to date. Burry, who frequently deletes his tweets, suggested on Twitter on Sunday that the 18% gain in the tech-heavy NASDAQ composite index since the start of the third quarter is likely to reverse. Can't shake that silly pre-Enron, pre-9-11, pre-Worldcom feeling, he wrote, referring to three events which contributed to an approximately 75% decline in the NASDAQ between February 2000 and September 2002. And I, get down through the whole thing here. I'm, I'm going to skip this paragraph. Not real important, but among the stocks that Burry sold are stake, a stake in Facebook parent Meta platforms that are that was worth 12.9 million at the end of the quarter, a 19.7 million dollar stake in Cigna Core, and a 23.1 million stake in Bristol Myers Squibb Company. The Nasdaq Composite was recently up to blah blah, blah whatever. Um, so you say, why is this all all the, why is this important at all to a Bible believer? Well, um, because oftentimes the rich people will kind of do things that will signal where things are going. They have connections through fraternal organizations or even just they keep up with um, what's going on, world events and whatever else. And they can see the direction of things coming and you can kind of get an idea of what things are going to happen. Um, does the Bible mention Debtor prisons. Yes, we'll get to the scriptures here in a little bit. Um, but I just find it really interesting. Let me show you something here. This is what he invested in the Geo Group Incorporated. Um, Geo Continuum of Care. Sounds somewhat uh, papal slash military. Um, the Continuum of Care. You know, you think of the Magisterium and <laughs> just, I don't know, it reminds me of a Catholic thing. I'm not saying that there's a direct tie in there. Of course not. Um, Catholics wouldn't be in the prisons or anything. <clears throat> Never. The GEO Group is committed to providing leading evidence-based rehabilitation programs to individuals while in custody and post-release into the community through the GEO Continuum of Care. GEO's diversified services platform provides unique capabilities for the delivery of educational and vocational programs, cognitive, behavioral, and substance abuse treatment, and faith-based services. I thought that was an interesting thing there. Faith-based services. Hmm. You mean they're working with the 501c3 government incorporated churches? 
No, they wouldn't do that. The GEO Continuum of Care has enhanced in-custody rehabilitation programming, including cognitive behavioral treatment integrated with post-release support services. Military does the same thing. They do, my wife, we were talking about this whole thing, and she said, you know, yeah, it's, you know, well, career placement and everything else when you're done with your tour of duty or whatever you want to call it. Um, so, interesting. Um, but looking at the way the future is going with people here in America that just cannot stop spending, you know, I mean, the, a very well-known thing about America, a fact about America is that 70% of gross domestic product is actually debt, consumer debt, not corporate, <laughs> consumer debt. And you see people and they drive around with such pride on their faces, driving around their car, their truck and whatever else. And you think, you don't even own the thing. People feel that they're wealthy in this country, and yet it's liabilities. It's not assets. They don't even understand the difference. I live in a million-dollar house, and I drive a $75,000 truck, and I'm wealthy. No, you're making payments to the bank. You are a borrower, a debtor, okay? And as I get older, the more I – as I'm getting older, the more I'm understanding how important it is to study economics. And to study what's going on there because we've been bred to be sort of docile factory workers just kind of mindless sheep that go along and get fleeced all the time by financial institutions and i'm not saying that you want to strive to be rich in the whole thing there you know they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition first Timothy chapter 6 verse 9 i get it love of money is the root of all evil verse 10 i get it I understand but what i'm saying is money is one of the facts of living on this earth and you have to make sound financial decisions and you know we have lived debt free uh, our my wife and i ever since we got married uh, this is our 10th year of marriage and we live debt free and we have one income okay so and there's ways to do it that you can do it i hear people oh you can't live that way anymore yes you can um, you have to make sacrifices. There's ways to get out of debt. Um, uh, God does not want you to be just drowning in debt and everything. Um, but watching these guys, looking at these guys, and I'm thinking, why does a guy, I mean, I can see why you would sell stock in Facebook and some of the other things that this Michael Burry guy did. But I'm thinking, why would he buy so much stock in this organization right here that I have up on screen? Hmm. Then I found an interesting thing here, the locations, and it's it's international too, by the way. It's a global organization here, the U.S. Secure Services, okay, and right there is the map, and I find it interesting that you can actually see that there are basically, it looks like three headquarters, the red, you know, pentagrams there, I mean stars, um, but look where the these prisons are all located. These re oh no, there's one down there too, hiding behind that one. Uh, Florida Star has, you know, they have one too. None up in Maine, where I'm at. Uh, one in Pennsylvania, ironically. But all these different areas. Hmm. And it kind of brought to mind uh, the article here on Jacob's website, Jacob Thompson's website, winepressnews.com, talking about this net zero. Agenda absolute zero. They also call it net zero by 2050. The whole thing, and they have these smart cities. Isn't that interesting? Here's that, and you have these prisons all in those same areas. Hmm. Almost like if people can't pay their debt in the future because we can't rely on communist China to make our goods anymore, maybe we'll have communist Chinese factories here in America where debtors will be going, going to make products. I mean, you have people that are just drowning in debt. They have, there's not much that they can do. Just thought that was interesting. But what about the thing of debtor prisons? Um, when did the U.S. abolish debtor prisons? Debtor's prison. Debtor's prisons were abolished in the U.S. by the Supreme Court in 1883. Kind of a weird thing there. So, yes, they were actually in America. They actually did have debtors' prisons in America. Let me go back to this again. Let's get into the, some of the scriptures here on the thing of debtors' prison. 
Matthew chapter 18, verse 21. Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me, and I forgive him till seven times? Jesus saith unto him, I say not unto thee, uh, until seven times, but until seventy times seven. Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king, which would take account of his servants. And when he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him, which owed him ten thousand talents. He was in debt, in other words. But for as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold, and his wife and children, and all that he had in payment to be made. So he's being sold into slavery, essentially. Interesting. The servant therefore fell down and worshipped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. Pay off my debts, in other words. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion and loosed him and forgave him the debt. Right there you have it, debt. But the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him an hundred pence. And he laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me that thou owest. And his fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. And he would not, but went and cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. Debtor's prison. And quite frankly, I think that that is just. I don't think people should continue to just be allowed to just borrow and borrow and borrow and then declare bankruptcy and start all over again. I think it's very wicked. And I think it's really disgusting, too, that, you know, I went and actually applied for a mortgage years ago. Just because I thought, you know, I could make this thing happen and we could have this mortgage. And I'm against mortgages, but I thought, well, you know, to further the ministry, if I can do this thing and whatever. And they wouldn't give me a mortgage. You know why? Because I don't have credit. Because I'm not a debtor. Interesting. And the place that we were going to get was not an expensive place. And the money that I was making at the time and everything else, they said, you, you should be able to get this, but you don't have credit. You're not, a, you're not in debt all the time. And she said, the woman that, that did, was doing the uh, mortgage application, she said it really should be in your favor because you don't have any debts. All you have are assets. But that's not how the system has been set up. It's such a weird system that we have here in America. But um, <clears throat> verse 31, so when his fellow servants saw what was done, they were very sorry and came and told unto their Lord all that was done. Then his Lord, after that he had called him, said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all that debt, because thou desirest me. Shouldest not thou also have had compassion on thy fellow servant, even as, also, even as I had pity on thee? And his Lord was wroth, and delivered him to the tormentors, till he should pay all that was due unto him. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if ye from your hearts forgive not every one his brother their trespasses. So the Lord is saying, Here's the example of debtor prisons. You all understand that, correct? Yeah. Okay, let me explain it and make it into a spiritual application here. That's what he's saying. But they were obviously debtor prisons. Hmm. Psalm 37, verse 21. The wicked borroweth and payeth not again, but the righteous showeth mercy and giveth. Righteous should be out of debt. And I understand, I have been in debt in the past, even you know, long before I got married, I, when I was in high school, I was in debt. I drove junker vehicles, and then at one point in time, I got sick and tired of this one. It was a Plymouth Champ. Look that one up. That's a very rare car, actually, right now. Dodge made a Colt, and then they had the Plymouth Champ. Uh, it had dual-range transmission. It was manual and everything else. Interesting little car. Um, but... Uh, I had this car and it was always just breaking down. The thing left me sit so many times and it was getting on my nerves. And I said, you know what? I just want to get a good vehicle. And my um, older brother, uh, his future brother-in-law knew a guy that had a Ford Ranger pickup truck, a 1987 Ford Ranger pickup truck, <clears throat> had a Rancho suspension lift and all this other stuff. I won't get into all the details, but it was a really nice looking truck, really cool lift the kit on it and everything else and i just fell in love with this truck i just had to have this truck but i didn't have the money for it so i went to the bank and i got a loan to buy this truck <clears throat> so i understand what it's like to be in debt and i had a few other loans over the years after that never had a mortgage but um i understand why people have those but the whole point is 
<clears throat> this country and most other countries as well, but America especially, I think is probably the worst. Um, people just can't stop spending. And it has to end at some point in time. And I know that what they would like to do is they would like to uh, move people over to the central bank digital currencies and just kind of continue the system. But, you know, it's still, I don't understand how they could do that. What with, you know, precious metals market being a competitor to the dollar, the dollar, just they just keep printing billions and billions of dollars. Oh, the Ukraine needs weapons? Here, we'll send billions of dollars over there. Oh, we want to pay off the student loan debts? Okay, here's another, you know, 300 billion or whatever it is. At some point in time, this thing has to stop. So what I'm thinking is, if they created slave labor factories in America and said, hey, who will come and work? People wouldn't want to work. You have people walking off the job at Amazon, uh, one Amazon warehouse out in California because it was too hot. People demanding higher wages and everything else. Americans would not work in slave labor factories unless they were dead or prisons, unless that system is already there. And you have this guy, Michael Burry, and he's saying, hmm, I'm seeing this coming in the future. Little insider knowledge here, little wink, wink. Um, a good possible way to make some real money in the future, invest in these prisons, which ironically are just right in the same locations as the future smart cities. Hmm. I don't know. But see, you say, but they still wouldn't get Americans to go in there. Yes, they would. If the American people all of a sudden, there's no pharmaceutical drugs coming from China anymore. And now all these Americans, oh, it's your duty. You have to get in there and you have to work at these factories to make the life-saving medication for the elderly people here in America. You want to be part of that, don't you? And it's a good way to pay off your debts. I don't know, just a theory. So just I saw that. I wanted to put this out. I'm going to be doing some more live streams in the future. Um, <clears throat> we have been really busy with a lot of um, stuff with our property. And so I, that's why I did the King Jesus version that gave me a few, you know, weeks off, um, of, you know, having to do a lot of studies, but I'm, I might even be doing another live stream today. I'm not sure, but I'm going to be doing a lot of different, um, live streams and, and things here just to catch up on a lot of articles. Um, you know, my wife has a, a number of articles that she found some really interesting stuff. And, you know, she's she's got some pretty neat things and, and I've been wanting to bring out videos. But I'm, my thing is maybe I can make it into a big study, but then it gets, you know, bogged down and, I, and then it just sits there and it doesn't go anywhere. So um, I'm probably going to start doing some more of these. Um, it, it all depends on the minute or on the uh, the ministry. Yeah, but on also our lives. Uh, we had to run to a farm this morning. To get some um, <clears throat> things from them um, so you know we try to support local farms and everything so that's where we were this morning um, and so we have other things to get done but we'll see um, so I just wanted to bring that out and just uh, <clears throat> say I think it's pretty interesting that um, this very big investor guy is investing in private prisons and it'll work together with the churches faith-based organizations <laughs> i'm just thinking oh boy um <clears throat> so anyhow um <clears throat> i want to address a comment here i saw your comment the other day i wanted to say something about this uh, brian do you agree with using debt as a tool is it okay to have debt if you have the money to pay back to pay back and what about credit cards i've had people tell me i need to build my credit um <clears throat> the whole thing is i'm not going to say it's all robert kiyosaki that came up with this rich dad poor dad thing um there's probably others that came up with it but he was kind of the guy that went big with it the thing of good debt where basically you build wealth wealth through debt um you don't actually go out and buy a house um, with the money that you work for, you actually would go to the bank and you get a mortgage and then you buy that house and then you rent that house 
And with that money, then you get more debt and more debt and more debt until you can pay off the things that you want. And then you kind of shield those from all the world of debt that you have, just to really boil it down simply. And it's a little bit of a scam. And quite, quite frankly, I don't think it's very honest. Um, I mean, it's not that you're gambling or whatever else there, but it's people jump into a market when it's good and then they can make a lot of money on it. Now, I understand the, the whole thought process of that um, and building your credit and whatever else. But um, the problem is, if you go back, when did this whole system get started? It ties into the fraternal organizations that go back to the Vatican, quite frankly. And upstanding members of the church were given certain privileges and others, if you're not a member of the church, um, <clears throat> you know, it's... It gets really iffy. And the whole thing is being a big, um, not only a spokesman for, I shouldn't say spokesman, not really a spokesman, but being very much for debt-free living and practicing that lifestyle myself, it's far better than getting into debt to make things happen. Um, it's frustrating because I see these people and they have really nice things on the surface but i understand it's all just liabilities they don't they're not assets and so um you just have to you know the bible talks about making yourself poor so that you can be rich well there's truth to that um even with the fact that we don't make a huge amount of money in ministry we're still able to have enough um uh, wealth to be able to buy what we want because we live so cheap. <laughs> um, I mean, you can make money, you can make a substantial amount of money by learning how to save money, if I can say it that way. Um, so, uh, <clears throat> um, so we'll see uh, about today, I don't know. Like I said, I might come back and do another, another live stream later on. Um, so, but for now, that's going to be it. Like I said, just a real quick little live stream here and um, just something to think about, something to pray about. Um, something I think we really should pray about as the body of Christ is we should pray against the central bank digital currency thing um, because it is it is the precursor to the mark of the beast. And I know people say, well, you know, it has to come in and all that. Yeah, but it doesn't have to come in right now. And we can fight off that whole system. And um, <clears throat> so. Um, I guess uh, see everybody later. Please stay close to the word of God and thank you for watching.